Hello everybody, this is Sunshine and we are here for the private room with Tiffany. And tonight we are here with our special guest, Mr. Damian Michaels. Um, Mr. Damian Michaels made a pretty, hmm, a pretty serious post on his Facebook page and I couldn't resist checking him out and reaching out to him to ask him to be on our podcast tonight. So if y'all see me looking at the screen, it's because I'm not, I don't like these numbers. These numbers are not cute. So <laughs> you might see them disappear because I don't like them. So um, anyway, back to what I was saying. So Mr. Damian Michaels, he made a post. I'm about to drop it in, in, in the thread on Facebook because I want y'all to catch up on it so that y'all know what the heck we're talking about. Um, the post was, you know, it wasn't a bad post. It was something to get your your mind flowing, um, your, your, your mind just working, your juices going. It was a good chat um, in there, um, a pretty long a thread of feedback that was going back and forth between the, the men and the women. Um, and so we're going to talk about it. But before we do that, we are going to be getting back to our artist spotlight starting tonight. So we have two artists that we're going to be spotlighting, and one of them is our own Ropey Hill with her song Toxic. And then also we're going to be um, listening to Miss MK or Miss MK Bramlett, sorry, MK dot Bramlett on Instagram. And the song that we're going to be listening to um, by her is going to be played at the end. But before we get going, let's go ahead and listen to Toxic. Now, I asked for songs that were relevant to our theme tonight. You tell me. Is it relevant or not? Do you like the song or not? So here we go. Yeah. Yeah. DJ Kane on the track, boy. 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 It's something about the way that my body calls your name. Got me feeling and going. Every time I touch your bullet, I get a rush. Just one hit of you, I can't get enough. You came along and you set my soul on fire. I swear that your love gets me. I feel so good. Feel so good to me. Nothing else could.
What y'all think? What did y'all think? Did y'all like that? That was beautiful. Yes. Okay. 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 Let's see. Let's see. What you think, Tiffany? What you think, Barry? Barry and the ladies over there. What y'all think? Y'all like that? I've been loving this one, so. Yep. I, honestly, we couldn't hear it for some reason. It wasn't playing through on our. Uh, uh oh, Damien, were you able to hear it? Oh, I heard it perfectly fine and clear. That was that was perfect. Okay. Okay. Okay, cool. Well, I'm sorry you didn't you didn't hear Barry, but I will send it to you. Um, but thank you. Yeah, this song has been out um, for a little while now, not a long time, a little while now, and um, it has definitely, definitely, like, gone off the chart all over YouTube. And you you should just see the responses that people have um, given to this um, to this song um, because it's it's just it's sexy. It's got it's got a nice little feel to it, the beat, everything. And y'all should just, y'all should see the video. Y'all should see the video. We didn't play the video before, but y'all should see the video. And when I tell y'all, <laughs> when I tell y'all, I'm about to tell y'all how many views this video has had. This video has had 65,000 views in three months. Every time I look at it, it has gone up. Wow. Wow. Y'all make sure that y'all listen to it. I'm about to put the link to the video in the comments on our Facebook page. Y'all make sure that y'all go and like this video, that y'all uh, heart this video, y'all bookmark it and everything, and tell us what y'all think. So if y'all are watching right now, I need y'all to go to the face our Facebook page in the comments and tell us what do y'all think of that song. Okay, I already see some people responding. Thank y'all, thank y'all. I appreciate y'all. For- yes, thank y'all, thank y'all. Yep, Miss Rowe. So, Miss Rowe, what's up? Um, I need you to tell us. Let me let me get wait, let me let me get this. Whoop, whoop, there we go, Miss Rowe. Tell us about this song. What what's behind this song? Give us give us give us some some juice. <laughs> um, so this song was written for my number eleven, and my number eleven is actually the eleventh person who I've actually had sex with in life. Um, and it was just something about the way that he made me feel when we were together. He has since passed, but um, it was something just about the way that he made me feel when I was with him. And me and my daughter was trying to, well, I was trying to come up with a concept or a song that would express how love is almost like a drug. And my daughter, my actually 14 year old daughter helped me write it. Um, <laughs> she came up with the title. She came up with the concept. So yeah, that's a little background on number eleven. Nice, nice. Well, I love the song. You know, I love the song. Thank you. And I've already said you need to put out a female um uh subject to this song, but you ain't listening to me right now, so that's okay. But when you do, make sure you let us know so that we can put that video on. So that one is gonna be double that what it is now. I'm yeah. telling you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. So we have Damian Michaels with us tonight. So um, everybody knows our normal cast members. Our normal cast members are Miss Tiffany K, Mr. Barry Scarborough, and his ladies, Miss Ropey Hill, and then we have Mr. Damian Michaels. So, Mr. Damian Michaels, please, please, please introduce yourself. Tell us what you do, what your career is, if you have your own business. Like, give us give us some info so that we can get to know you before we get into this post of yours <laughs> um well basically is a social media influencer so that is my businesses to make a considerable amount of income through social media and consulting with individuals and people through health and basically kind of like life coaching but more like self-improvement things that people need also i basically my instagram i don't really post on my instagram sometimes things end up on there because my instagram is connected to my facebook but my main page is damian michael extreme that's where you're going to see basically about 90 percent of my content that's where all my reels my videos and most of my life and everything is i also have a business that i run here up in upstate New York. Basically, that's where I live at right now. And I also am launching my business in the next, say, month or two months. I'm going to launch my business, which I don't want to disclose right now because 
it's kind of exclusive and it's low key, but it's going to be like a male sexual vitality thing that I'm going to do. And I'm launching that business very, very soon. But right now I'm just, you know, sticking to my page and, you know, handling my business. Good deal. And I'm currently writing a book. Good deal. Can't hear you. Sorry. Is this your first time publishing a book? No, I haven't done I'm published. No, I'm writing it right now. So when it's done, it will be my first book. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Um, or do we can we get like a, a little bit of what it's about? Something like a little tidbit? <laughs> yeah. Basically, the book is about relationship dynamics, and that's why the book is taking so long. And it's taken so long because there's so many dynamics to a People don't seem to under... People look at relationships as, as flat, very black and white. Somebody will be like, you know, oh, I was with this guy. And he said, you know, he treated me so good. And he took me here. And he did this. And he did this. And he did that. And he flew me here. So... Mm-hmm. I didn't think that, you know, he had any other woman. I just thought it was only me, you know? And, like, logically, on a very black and white level, you would think that. But on a on a, on a on a expansive level, you have to ask yourself immediately, oh, wow, this amazing man here is doing all these amazing things. He didn't just start doing them yesterday because you showed up. <laughs> it looks like he's pretty good at this, right? Maybe you should inquire or look a little deeper and see if he has something or something going on. It seems like there are other women that might want to throw some pussy at him. Right. Like common sense things people just don't seem to think about, you know? Like the guy at work that sits there and he's like, he wonders why his, you know, somebody's in his wife you know, in his bed like that. But we all know every single time we see a woman back Another man in this man's bed, and it doesn't have power, or she has over. She she's not gonna do it to any man that has over her. She's not gonna do that, or any man that she quote unquote slightly fears that he might remove her or do something if he catches her. They only do this for guys that are gonna walk in and be like, "Oh no, oh babe, I can't believe you're doing this to me." You know, that's why every time you watch the videos and it happens, what happens when she turns around? She she's almost like. Oh man, what are you doing here? Oh, why are you here? You're gonna be at work, and it's almost like there's no respect. You get what I'm saying? So there's simple dynamics that people just don't understand. And look at them, you know, especially like people who get used a lot of times. Sometimes, if you look at certain dynamics, you can just tell that that person brings no value to you, and basically, they're gonna use you, drain you, because they don't bring any value. Sometimes if you look at somebody, you can tell if they're a plus sign, a minus sign, or some if you can't make that deduction, you're you're gonna get caught out there. You're gonna be very, very naive and then you're gonna basically have to submit yourself to victimhood. You know, like those people who are like, oh, I did all these things and it's like that went on for like a year and a half. After like month one or month two, what what stops you from being like, you know what? I don't think this person is good for me. I even gave them money. They haven't paid that back. They're talking about moving in. Like, at what point do you just be like, you know, that's a minus symbol. I don't want that in my life. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I definitely get that, and I like I like your correlation between plus and minus and. I think that's going to be a pretty interesting. So, is that what your whole book is about? Is it about a specific relationship, or is it about multiple? Oh, book, it's about everything. It keeps, it's, that, that was just a few dynamics. It's about everything. It just okay. goes, it goes into cheating. It goes into dating. It goes into sex. It goes into you know everything. Okay. All right. Cool. How old are you? I'm 43. 42. 42. 42. And are you are you married? Single? No. Dating? No. I'm courting at the moment. You're courting. I like that. I like that. You don't hear that phrase too too much. You don't hear about courting too much. 
So I like that you that you you said that. Not too many people even know what that means. <laughs> so for you to say that you're courting is a great thing. But now I'm going to ask you, what does courting mean to you? Because it might not mean the same thing that I'm that I feel that it that it means or what it traditionally is. So what is your what is what does courting mean to you? So you want me to really simplify? When dating, all right. There are people who date. They they're dating to just guess dating, right? And then there are some people who say they're dating marriage. Like when you go out on a date, they'll say, yeah, I want this to lead to marriage. Me personally, personally, my definition of courting or courtship you can basically encompass and kind of structure out an entire plan that is basically supposed to lead you to into a union. That's basically courtship for me. It's, it's, it's not necessarily I think it's beyond dating because you're, I think it's more specified. Because see, when you're dating, you're thinking, oh, let me go out here and, I don't know, sample this person or, you know. Sample. <laughs> person. You know, I want to just feel them out. I want to do this and I want to do that. When, in a courtship, I feel like there's more of a value there and you're you're in a situation where okay, as a life partner manner versus a what's the word like no, no. So it's it's different it's not necessarily dating. okay so you're dating with intent 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 you have a plan in place you know what it is that you most likely want from that person or with that person did I get that right yes got but it there's another thing that's going on a lot of Aren't paying attention to. You understand how there's a relation, right? Mm -hmm. We're all, we're in a courtship, so that's basically like a relationship, pretty much. It's not like I'm, you know what I'm saying? It's not like I'm outsourcing that courtship to somebody else. It's a specific courtship. Thank you. Well, I'm so, I'm really glad that you um, you talked about that and you clarified that because I feel the same way when it comes to dating. I mean, dating to me should have a purpose. It shouldn't just be for free meals and to go out on random dates with random people doing random things. So um, that is something that we are going to be talking about um, it's very, very soon. It's courting and the difference between courting and dating. So maybe we'll have you back on for that episode. <laughs> That would be great. That would be great. Okay, so we're going to get into this pose. So hopefully everybody has had a chance to, to read the pose because I put it in the in the comments on Facebook. Um, I put it into um, the, the chat with everyone earlier, probably when I first told everybody you're going to be on. So there's really no excuse why nobody has read it on this, on the video right here. Everybody should have read it by this, point, by this time. So we're going to break it down because it's a pretty long pose. So we're going to break it down. So I'm going to read the first couple of sentences. It says, not every woman lets you fuck her heart. A lot of times they will block that off and only give you some pussy and void of the heartstrings. They don't want you in their heart. And that leaves a lot of men confused because most think fucking her gives them access to her emotion. When it doesn't, it frustrates and confuses the fuck out of us. But because we cannot control you. I'm going to stop right there. <laughs> I mean, just the first few sentences alone was pretty damn strong. What what made you make this post? If my brain comes across a specific psychological record, and there, it just begins to formulate a post for me, and then I write it. Okay, was there not anything in particular? Or was just maybe something you heard on the radio? Anything personal in this post? No, there was... Um, you see, I don't think... Because I, I, I remember the 
tools and for writing it. Mm -hmm. I come to realization, I'll just say I'm going through my life. Like, say happens, I go to think about a girl or a girl that yeah. I was yeah. sexually or something. the situation about control because I'm reading myself to try and figure out okay okay you guys had sex she's not giving you that emotional clingy response so you don't feel like you necessarily have control because usually that's basically what women do she's not giving you that response but it's not necessarily she's not giving you that response it's just that once I analyzed further, I realized certain women just won't give you access to their hearts or their emotions. It, it's almost like they'll compartmentalize, almost like a prostitute. They'll compartmentalize their vagina, like, okay, this is what this is going to be. I'm going to get mine, I'm going to get my nut, and then I'm going to go about my business because I don't want, I don't want to get connected to you, and I don't want to get you hurt and sometimes you can break through that like it happens if you know she keeps having sex with you over and over and over again and then eventually it breaks through emotions come on say we we caught right and that's when boom now you got the heart string what is that now you have some control yeah yeah. So, um, <laughs> okay. So I'm, I'm going to go back to something you just said. So she could compartmentalizes and she does all these things. And you said sort of like a prostitute. Why does it have to be sort of like a prostitute? Men do this all oh, the right. time. Men compart deep compartmentalize. I was going to say the same she, thing. Why does she because have to be not like all women? Just yeah. give us an example because we know, see, I don't care if she's a prostitute or not. I'm looking at her mental and physical ability to literally be a whole entire woman and just be like, oh, I'm going to fuck these 10 to 15 guys tonight, and that's not going to bother me because I still have a man over here that I'm going to still bang. He's my boyfriend, and he's my heart strings are attached to this man or this pimp, but I'm going to go out here and do this. It's absolutely no different when a girl's sitting out here and she wants to sleep with this guy and sleep with that guy and sleep with... She ain't asking for money doing the same thing, but she doesn't want to get emotionally involved and emotionally hung up on men, so she doesn't mind them taking them out, taking her out, going out here, going back to that house, having sex and casual sex, but she doesn't want that emotional... You know what I mean? She doesn't want that emotional connection. Well, men do that all the time. So but why is that an issue for women? Can I add? Can I just can I just say something real quick? Sure. I think that that's a surface level way of thinking about women and how they are when it comes to sexual escapades with men, because some women do it. I'm gonna I'm gonna be transparent here. Promiscuity was a big thing for me when I was a teenager after I was raped, and the reason being was if I just gave it to a guy, he couldn't take it from me. So I think that it's a little ignorant to think that a woman is just having random sex with random men all the time and not giving her heartstrings. It could very well be that she is just not equipped because she's been through so much trauma that it's just it's easier for her to just do it with her like a blindfold on. Like, I can't see it. I can't. I'm just here in the moment. And then once it's done, it's done. And I don't have to see this person again. I, because like for me, I, I can easily have sex with someone and not be emotionally connected to them. And I know it's hard because women are supposed to be emotional beings. And we're, I guess it's, it's to men, some men, it's like, like you said in your post that 
some men, they expect a woman to become emotionally connected after that nut is, is, is given off or whatever. But at the same time, sometimes some, not all women are the same, just like not all men are the same, but it's a double standard in my, in my point, my perspective, because men do it all the time. Men right. have sex with multiple women in, in one night. And they and the thing is, is that they're deemed, oh, he's a man. He, he, uh, uh. <laughs> but let a woman do it, and she's a hoe. She's a whore. She's a, you know, all of these Prostitute. derogatory statements. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess for me, men do it all the time. They can have sex with multiple women and not and not have emotions involved. So why is it a big issue when women do? I can have sex with a man one time, maybe twice, without getting my heartstrings involved. Multiple times, no, I can't do that. But I can't at least once without getting my heartstrings involved. So why is it such a big deal um, for a woman? Um, ladies, I think we're one. You're com you're right, but y'all have to understand in the where if you notice, I didn't say anything about what men do or what they don't do. Men are complete and utter whores. What do you do? In this Thank post, you for, for identifying that. <laughs> Listen, no, y'all gotta y'all gotta stop for a second because the thought process is unbalanced. We must remain balanced. This isn't man against woman. I'm simply explaining her post, the dynamic that she's speaking about into regards to specific women who will have sex with a man and they don't want to give them access to those emotions. Now, was, was there whose post? Let me You're let referring to someone whose post? My post, the post that you, the post that you brought up. Okay, well, you you said her post. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. yeah the post right there. Now, basically, what we're trying to say is, basically, what I'm trying to say in that post, and what you guys are saying is, I'm not trying to go against women. I'm just trying to say, in entirety, men do not like when women respond emotionally to sex the same way we do. That's what the post was inclining. That's why I told her my experience was with other women, I was wondering what was going on with them when I couldn't get them caught up on me. Well, what you is your intention then? Is your intention, not, not directly to you, but in, in for a man. So are you saying that men, their intentions are for a woman to fall head over heels after um a night of passion if you will and then so that the man can feel like he has some sort of control over her what i'm telling you is there are specific men there are specific men and in instances basically where the act of sex afterwards you're supposed to have a certain feeling of connection you're supposed to have a certain level of your fe your feelings and your your behavior towards well, us. Who Some said that you have to have these feelings and connections afterwards? Who said that? Nobody. Nobody actually said it, but it <laughs> is expected because basically this is why. What, if it, <laughs> this is what happens. See, uh -huh. this, every single time you guys try and box me into a situation, I'm not gonna go. I don't want to go against. I'm not here to go against them. I'm here to explain dynamics. No one's trying to box you. Please know that that's not right. what it is. We're, right. <laughs> we're not trying to do that. <laughs> we're not. Go back and forth like I'm at on a feminist panel. I just want to explain dynamics in relationships. And a dynamic in a relationship is when a man meets a woman and he's going through the dating and they're dating and they're going and dating each other. First off, he is not, any man will tell you, he is not going to even actually feel like you are his girl or you're his woman until you, after you do what it is you do. Until then, he's going to feel a little reluctant or feel like you may still be talking to or with somebody else. Once you give yourself to him, he's going to feel like, oh, I think she may be a little bit more obligated to me. Once again, this is going to be based off of your feelings and how you do respond to that man. Because okay, I have a most, question. Most experiences, you have sex with a woman, her, her she immediately, her behavior immediately changes. Mm -hmm. Immediately. 
uh, do how many other men agree with you? <laughs> is this something that you did like a study and men uh, collectively have said this? Like, no. have do other men, no. other men agree with this? A collective? No, I didn't do it. No, I didn't. I, I didn't do a study. Okay. So is this just your experience? And you, there are other men that feel this way? Because I'm looking at your post. There are other men that feel this way. So I guess what I'm trying to understand is that do most men feel this way? Or is this just some expectations that women are not meeting up to? They're not putting their heart into it. They're not putting their emotions into it. Um, and that's the confusing part. Or is this something that multiple men will have talked about and have shared? Do you know that? All right, let's 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 go let's go to this dynamic and let's see if this makes a little bit more sense. And Barry, you're quiet, but which when, I'm surprised. <laughs> when men are trying to figure out what your body count is, they're trying to figure out how many men imprinted on you. Why? Because the more men a woman sleeps with, the less your ability is going to be able to attach or have that woman emotionally connected with you. That's not true. So the more, okay, on that note, we will agree to disagree. Okay. But I'm right now, a woman this, will say, yeah, definitely disagree. Oh. It, this is why I decided to be quiet. I'm just going to let him. A, a, a woman who will date five men over a 10 year span. She dated five men over a 10 year span. The chances of you having a deeper connection with her is way higher than you having a connection with someone like, you know, Sexy Red or somebody who just sleeps with a guy because, I don't know, his sneakers look cool. Or he popped up and said the right thing at the right time. Or he, she was ovulating. There's a difference. In, there's a specific difference in I, women. Certain women move differently. Ovulating. I had to have sex because I was ovulating. <laughs> so, okay. Okay. I, I need some feedback on this because I totally disagree with everything that's being said <laughs> but i don't want to be the only one disagreeing um so you asked why i was being quiet and to be honest with you I was, I was, it was hard to get a word in edgewise but i was just gonna let him dig that because i'm um i totally disagree with you bro and i think that's assigning labels to women and like they're all the same and you know because, all the same. You're gonna he, didn't let me, all, he didn't say all the same he didn't I'm I'm just saying that uh, that like as, assigning something to a woman because she might want to have sex with you and not fall in love with you. I mean, maybe that's not where she was at in life. Maybe it wasn't there. You know, I I don't and and I also think that you know women should be allowed to have sex without feeling like they have to be attached just so the man doesn't get his feelings hurt. I didn't say they didn't have to be. I didn't say, I just I just explained there are women that move that way. I didn't say they couldn't or could. I never said there was anything wrong or right about that. I'm not trying to argue with you. I'm just, I'm voicing my opinion just like you voiced yours so everybody on the panel will get a chance to. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that, and my other thing is, is that regardless of a woman's body count, <laughs> Mm -hmm. She can fall in love with, with someone tomorrow, even if she just slept with 20 men or five men or one man. A woman can fall in love when, number one, she's ready to fall in love and the right man comes along. When the right man comes along, she can give into, you know, she can give the opportunity for a man to open up her heart, so forth and so on. When the right man comes along, it doesn't matter how many men she sleeps with and it doesn't matter... If, if it was a, a virgin <laughs> versus a, a prostitute, if, if both of them meet the right man, then both of them can be open to falling in love and and, and having attach, attachments and emotional connections. So I don't I don't agree with with that either. I just don't think that a woman, because of how many men she sleeps with, that a man should. Number one, if two if grown people are talking about how many people they slept with, to me, that's that's immature. And I'm just going to be real frank. I think that's immature. If a man asks me how many men I've slept with, he's not going to get an answer. I don't care if it's one man or 100 men, 500 men. I'm not going to give him an answer because, one, I don't want to know how much 
how many women a, a man has slept with before me. All I want to know is that he is disease free, he's AIDS free, that he's emotionally available, and that he wants me and he's going to invest in me. I don't care how many men, I mean, women that he slept with. I don't. And the, the other thing is because I'm not going to answer him if he asks me how many men I've slept with, because it's none of his business who I've slept with before him. Again, as long as I'm safe, as long as I'm disease free and I'm, a, I'm emotionally and romantically intimately available, that's none of his business. So if I meet someone who wants to know how many people I slept with, then that's going to be a, a, an instant turnoff, number one. Number two, I'm not going to ask him. So if he even volunteers that information, I'm not going to want to hear it. And that's going to be a turnoff. But I don't think that a woman's body count it should be an indicator of whether she can fall in love tomorrow or the next day versus a woman who has a lower body count. I don't think that's that's a, a good a good thing to say. <laughs> I'm just gonna keep that real. I just don't think it is. Um I saw that it it makes it when in your post you were saying that it it confuses men. So we talked about that. Um, but then the other part is where you added, we can't control, we can't control you. So can you explain that? What does that mean when you, when you talk about that in your post that we can't control you? Is that, is that because our, the emotions aren't getting involved or is it really about, we can't control your moves from that point because our emotions are not involved. So can you explain what that meant? I think it's because we can't control your mood because the emotions are not involved. Okay. 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 You know, like women who are women who are like man eaters. You know, those women who like they'll literally go out there to the bar, and a guy will be out there, and he'll think she's beautiful, and he'll think he's getting her, and he'll think he's sleeping with her, and the whole time. He's not. He's actually playing right into her, her hands, and she just thought he was cute, and he, he was good prey, and she came over. She had him buy him drinks, took him home that night, and the next day, actually, in the morning time, and that's, this is another thing I'm going to add, and this is, this is actually another kicker. In the morning time, when we got to do, like, the walk of shame in the morning, that's <laughs> Another thing men don't like, like if we get up in the morning and like you're like, you know, you get up out of the bed and you go on or something like that. Now, granted, there are some men that are like, okay, cool, she's gone. But when you on just some boom, gone, no nothing, no there, you're just gone and you just, dudes is just like, oh, damn. You know what I'm saying? It's a different story when she's sitting there, she hung up on you, you got to kick her out or send her home or something like that. It's different. The element, the whole, all that behavior and everything different and it's just a dynamic it doesn't mean anything's good or anything's bad about it it's going to happen every single time two people meet either one person is going to have more magnetic pull than the other or the other person is going to have more magnetic pull than the other it that's just a dynamic that's just the way it goes you've slept with men before you know there's a guy you sleep with him and right after you sleep with him you're just like when am i going to see him again when is this going to happen again what other women are he? What other women is he sleeping with? All of a sudden, mentally, you're tuned into this man. And then there's another man who probably did nothing. He did nothing. He didn't do anything for you. And right after you're done, you just like, huh, I got to go to work. Or I'm going to the gym. Or you make an excuse because he didn't do anything. The connection wasn't there. He didn't, he didn't hit that, you know? That's why everybody's always talking and making jokes about, oh, she's going crazy right now. Oh, he must have hit the back. Why? Oh, he's going crazy right now. Why? Because if you even look at a dick and you look at the back of the pussy, there's a heart chakra right there. So when they're saying, oh, he must have hit the back, he must have hit it, oh, he must have hit the heart chakra. So there's just an element there. There's a dynamic there that everybody plays off of. And it's there. Um, so, listen, so listening to you and then reading the post, I kind of feel as if this is more about men who deal with a woman, they sleep with a woman, they expect that this woman now is going to attach themselves emotionally or may attach them or should attach themselves emotionally or should give a fuck after the fuck. <laughs> but really, it sounds like it's the man who's hurt and that's the man who's not getting what he wants in this situation. And because the woman is not re responding the way he would want her to, 
then that's really that sounds like that's really what the the thing what it's the issue is to me. Okay. So, well, let's, <laughs> let's put it out there. Not every man is secure. Some men can go out there and they can go get a woman and they can sleep with her and they don't really care. They actually just wanted to sleep with her. Sleeping with her, getting her in bed and conquering her, that is something that we wanted to do. That's it. That's all. You, but you is it okay for a woman to do it too? Like, you know, isn't it fair for a woman to do it too? She can do it as much as she can. I just, I just explained that dynamic before I explained this one. Remember the, 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 the man right. either? Right. She can do it too. They but go, men, they but what I'm saying is men get up and, or, or better yet, say a man brings a woman home from the club which is like the worst thing to do sleeps with her and then says, Oh, sweetheart, I got an Uber on the way. You, you almost ready to get your, you know, you almost ready to get the hell out my house. That's the one I'm talking about right now. Uh, right. Oh, okay. okay. As far as like a man, how a man does the man, well, the woman eating not. And I don't mean that like, <laughs> <laughs> I hope you guys understand where I'm going with this. <laughs> I, I understand you. Boo. I understand you. Boo. <laughs> But um, but no, because like what I'm saying is I understand what you're saying about the man eating woman, the woman who who knows what what she can bring to the table in regards to the bedroom. And it's like a, a, a wham, like a one and done type thing. Like, thanks. Yeah, I'm, I'm out. I'm good. I won't call you and you don't call me. Yeah. But a man can do the same thing yeah. Yeah. I was just... where he's like, um, you know what I'm saying? Like, he's like, um. Like I said, with the whole, oh, hey, sweetheart, I got you an Uber or a cab is on the way. You, you know, mm -hmm. you got like five minutes to get your shit and get the fuck out. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's it's an even playing field at the end of yeah. the day, if you really think about it. Yeah, yeah I didn't say it wasn't. Yeah. You know, but yeah. as far as like the emotions yeah. being involved, a man wanting to be in control of a woman, is that not emotionally based also? This is what this is the thing we have to understand here. Once again, this is not the man versus woman thing. I am simply explaining dynamics. Men, every single thing I'm explaining is I'm explaining what men do, the same exact thing women do, and then I'm explaining women do it. It's the same exact dynamic. It's no mm -hmm. different. I'm just explaining there are certain men that are secure, that don't mm -hmm. care about- Absolutely, absolutely. Oh. There are men that are secure. <laughs> insecure that they need that control just mm -hmm. like on the internet you have certain men who go oh this woman she better be submissive need her to be submissive there's some men they don't care about that they just sit back be a man as long as mm -hmm. their woman respects them and does what she's supposed to do they're not sitting them out there harping or begging mm -hmm. for that mm -hmm. submissiveness so you have two dynamics of men but you also uh, i see what you're saying i get what you're saying yep when yep yep men, i see the same mm -hmm. they do the same thing men and women do the same thing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so i'm i'm ahead. i'm a little confused on the so if a man is secure he's okay with just sleeping and it not being anything else but if he's insecure he has to have emotions because that that's that's the opposite of my life i'm i'm a secure man and i do delve into emotions because I'm secure. To me, insecure would be the the hit it and quit it. I don't want to get involved with all that because I don't want somebody to see who I really am. You missed the point. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, that's what you keep saying, but no, you missed the point. You're actually talking about you being insecure. It had nothing to do with you. I was talking about those men. I was talking about I, an I heard actually being. Uh, a, mo a woman to actually be emotionally attached to him to fill his insecurity versus a secure man who doesn't actually need that emotional control over a woman to fill his insecurity. It doesn't have to do with the man singularly himself and his own emotions at all. Okay. Okay. I, I get that. I get that. Um, okay. So, and by the way, I think it's important that when you're talking to Damien, that you all know that, that you know the dynamics of everybody on the on the panel. So myself, I'm polyamorous. I'm married. I'm polyamorous. Um, Tiffany is a uh, polyamorous as well, um, and so is Barry. You see his young ladies with him. He's polyamorous as well. <laughs> um, so Ro, she is um, 
not polyamorous. She is, she believes in dating one person at a time from what I understand and what I know. <laughs> um, and so um, we have our, our other uh, uh, cast members who are not here who are not polyamorous. So there's a nice mix of people on here. Um, and so I think that's really important for you to know kind of who you're talking to. So everyone you have on right now are all polyamorous. So we kind of love a little bit differently um, than the normal person, uh, or should I say the normal dynamics of relationships? The traditional, say. yeah. The traditional, traditional, yes. Traditional um, relationships. Um, we think a little differently. Our love styles are a little differently. So we might think a little bit more out the box than most. <laughs> yeah, so, and I think, and just to, just to add to that, Tiff, like, I think that, like, for me, it's hard for me to, um, to, hear and listen when I have a very deep thought process I take things deeper and I come from different perspectives mm -hmm. I don't just like I'm not one arrow straight to one perspective I look at it from different perspectives because I want to have a further understanding of what you want me to understand but also to maybe bring something into the conversation to where you might be like oh shit you know what? I didn't even think about it like that you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because I feel like it's an each one teach one type of thing where you might you might not have thought about that perspective. And if I bring it to your attention, now it's a whole bigger mm -hmm. understanding of that topic that we started off on. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And I also want to say is that we clearly understand that this is not a woman versus man thing. But I do think that when we make statements that we have to understand that there are different perspectives that our followers are watching and listening and we are aware of that so we have to look at both sides men women how do women view things how do men view things we had a whole episode on of men versus women Mars men versus, versus women. women and the yeah. way we think and how our emotions are um and that was a pretty deep conversation as well. So, um, so yeah, I, I just think that felt like it was, I needed to stop for a moment to share our dynamics with Damien so he can just know that we're, we're coming from, uh, from a different type of love style than some people may see as traditional. And, um, we try to be considerate of all love styles, um, when we're talking. Um, so I want to continue. So it says, in order to control you, we need you to give a fuck. When you don't give a fuck, we are left waiting in the wind for your mood to blow our way. That's why we lie to you. We need you to give a fuck so that you can, so that you open up the heart chakra so that we can tap into it. Telling you the truth keeps your guard up. As much as we love fucking y'all, we also love when y'all are emotionally attached to us. So that was a lot. So I want to talk about that. Like, it. it I want to talk about it. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm going to make it a little bit for you. I, everything you just said in that sentence is this right here. This is very, very simple. This is the man who's married, who's telling that woman, I'm going to leave her. He's telling her exactly what he wants to hear. Now, you have to understand something. This could be the boss, you know, can it secretary. This could be the manager at work banging one of his employees. And you have to understand something very simple. He already has her physically. He's already in her. She's already sucking his dick in the back room, probably sucking him off in the office. So why is he lying to her? Why is he? Every woman has been here. Y'all been here already. I'm not telling y'all nothing new. It's ain't deep. Why is he telling you all this shit about Oh, I'm gonna leave her, and and he's he's talking crap about her and everything. Why? He's telling you he's gonna leave her. Why? He wants to give you the illusion, lying to you, needs emotional control over you, so that you have that. Oh, you're gonna leave her. Oh, okay. So when you have conversations and you talk, you can be like, oh, we can do this, and we can do that, and we can do this, and we and you can paint this illusion, right? You can't paint this illusion and do all of this if you keep the wall up. And what's the wall? The wall is you bang her, and then after that, she calls, she texts, you don't respond. Yep, I'm with my wife right now. Pretty much that's it. We're just fucking. That's it. That's all. You're not going to get anything out of her. 
She's not, especially if, and that's if, this is if she actually already knows your dynamic. This is if she knows your dynamic. If she doesn't know your dynamic, like she doesn't know you have a relationship, then you have to really hold on to that because now you have to actually, it's going to form into that. And then you're going to have to actually somehow, some way, be in the relationship you're in here and be in the relationship you're in over there. And you're not going to get the best version of that woman if you don't convince her you're not, if basically if you don't convince her that you're in a relationship with her. And basically, that's why even the married man who already has a wife will sit there and lie to another woman and tell her these things. Because there's a, there's a game that goes on there that there's a game and you, you, you don't get the absolute maximum out of that game unless, unless you play it fully. Like there's some people out there that they just can't even, they can't, they can't get off on cheating unless they're cheating. And the craziest thing is this. I remember one time I made a post about it because one of my girls, she did it to me one time and it made things awkward. What she did was I lived with her and she actually said to me, she said, I don't care if you fuck any bitches as long as they know I'm the main bitch. That's what she said. Now, what she did in that moment was she took control over what it is I do because I agree to what it is she just said that means that any girl that comes into my field that I want to operate with, I need to let them know that she sits beneath her almost as if she's given me permission to be with said, said woman. So she, she literally takes all the, if I even wanted to be a cheater or wanted to be blah, 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 she just took all that power away from me. Well, actually in poly community, we call that hierarchy. So she's just a hierarchical woman. She wants her position to be known by anyone who might come into the fold with you. So that really has nothing to do with taking away the power. She's giving you a choice to make that statement very clear to anybody who comes in after her. So whether you, 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 you take that, you, you do it, like you tell them, it's totally on you. She's only she's only telling you what she's expecting of you. That's not her trying to overpower you or taking your power away. I and I even if it's not a poly relationship, I think that's really respectful of a woman to know that her man wants to fuck other women <laughs> and he wants to do this other stuff. And for her to say, "You do that, you do that, boo," but you just let them know that you have a woman. I don't think that's power or control. I think that's a woman that knows what kind of man that she has. Her value, yeah. Right, she knows that she's the woman at home that you come home to, maybe the mother of your child, maybe your wife, but she knows that you need to go out and you need to have these extra extra things going on or whatever. And she's saying, you do you, but you need to let you need to let her or whoever that other woman is know that you have somebody at home. I don't think that's about power or control, even non-poly relationships. I think that can even be in a traditional relationship where a woman just knows who her man is. If you're the type of man that you're going to cheat at this point, she's like, well, I know that you're going to do it. Go ahead and do it. But you need to let, let it be know known that I'm that I'm also in the picture. Exactly. I don't think that's about power and control or taking taking your power from you. I think that's just a woman who knows what kind of man she has. And that's OK. Not all women can do that. Not all men, not all women can say, yeah, you go out and do what you do. But some of us know, like, yeah, that's the kind of man he is. He needs to have that extra or he's going to do that anyway. So instead of you doing it behind my back and cheating, you go ahead and do that. And I know about it. But you just let them know that you got a wife at home. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. And it's it's not about power and control. So, you know, I don't I don't think you should see it that way. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. And there is power shift. Before that, you were fucking who it is you wanted to. And now she just now came on in there. She said, that power you have, hold on a second. I need to take some of that. That well, is let me ask it's not about power. I'm sorry. Let me ask you a question. Do you think that a healthy relationship requires power? She goes, I need to filter that through me, basically. That's what she says. Filter that through me. They need to understand I sit here. Yes, she does 
take power. Yes, she does. For herself, though. It, for it, herself, not for you. It <laughs> And there's energy, right? Energy needs balance. She took power for herself. If the power was here and she took it for herself, it shifted. There's a power shift. But so did into your attention when, if, if she wouldn't have to make that statement, it if matter. your attention was solely on, on her. So, I was just like, huh? All I was saying was there was a slight power shift. If the man had full control and the woman comes in and goes, hey, if you're going to do X, Y, Z, that's cool, but let them bitches know, yada, yada, yada. Yes, she did come in there and take some power. She got some power. Power shifted. That's all I was saying. I No. It, but there's <laughs> going to be power in a relationship, period. Okay, there is. But you were just talking about balance a second ago. Yeah, you've contradicted yourself a couple times. Oh, um, I all I'm telling you is there's power in a relationship. Power and balance are two separate things. What? Well, because you've talked about power and control a lot, even in your post. So it doesn't matter. So what? We're not it doesn't matter. I talk about everything in my posts. Yes, but what we're saying is that it's not necessarily taking power from you, but mm -hmm. it's giving me as the woman in a relationship power over my decisions, over what I want from for my relationship, what I'm willing to accept. That's not taking anything from you. Okay. That's giving myself the okay. room to be able to to be in this relationship. Listen, Go ahead, Barry. Okay. Always a, there's always a power exchange in a relationship. Mm -hmm. I mean, <clears throat> you compromise, you negotiate, you figure out, you know, who who handles this and who handles that and what rules you both feel comfortable with following and all that. There's, there's always a power exchange. Yes, we understand that there's, well, I understand there's always a power exchange. However, I don't feel that a woman telling a man that it's, that he can go out and do X, Y, Z, as long as he knows where home is or that person knows where home is. I don't feel like that's taking power from him. That's just I, my opinion. I, I agree. I, <laughs> I think if, if that was established ahead of time that, that like, Hey, we're together now, but you can still see other people. Then that doesn't have anything to do with the power exchange. The power exchange came in when, when they agreed to be together and they compromised on who, whose role was what, and who was going to do, who was going to bring what to the table, whether that be feelings or, financial or whatever, I think the power exchange happens then way before you get into the, um, yeah, I mean, if, you know, if, if you're, if you're in a relationship with somebody and they say they're yours, then, then there's no, nothing wrong with claiming that, Hey, you're mine. I, you know, go, go mess around, but you still mind at the end of the day. Yeah. I'm, um, I'm reading some of the comments and, on the on the original post and there's um <laughs> the ladies <laughs> the ladies were feeling some kind of way um but we also have some guys who um expressed it seems like all the guys agreed most of the guys agreed let me see let me make sure before i say it okay yeah so it looks like most of the most of the guys agreed and a lot of the women were just like no <laughs> So what was the, what kind of feedback did you get? Cause I'm sure, I'm sure you got some inbox messages. What kind of feedback did you get from this post from the guys? I want to start with the guys. What kind of feedback did you get from some of the guys with your post? Um, basically what ends up happening is a lot of men come in my inbox and they, they thank me because I'm basically stating things that they can't state because we're living in like a feminist world. And if you state anything real, authentic, or raw, no matter how fucked up it is, you basically get attacked for it. So basically, when I made that post, what I did was I spoke for a lot of men, but at the same time, I sat out there and I took all the bullets for them because they can't say that. Like, they can't make my post and not be deemed a shitty, horrible, messed up man. It's like, you can't express yourself as a man and still be seen or respected as a man, it's almost like you become like this dirt bag. When in all honesty, you're just expressing the raw primal sense of how it is we feel and operate in certain dynamics. 
And there's the thing about it is there's nothing anybody can do about it. You can't change a dynamic. A dynamic is always going to be the, the way a dynamic is, no matter what anybody says. If you have a couple in California, one in Texas and one in New York, and you have a dad and a mom with the two kids and a shooter comes in, this can be in three different places. A shooter comes in and starts shooting. The exact thing that's going to happen is every single time, because we're psychologically wired to do certain things. The mother is going to immediately go to protect the kids. She is not going to give one about the goddamn father. She's not even going to think about him. The father is not even going to think about himself. He's immediately going to go to protect the wife and the kids. This is just not every man. We're wired. <laughs> it's how we're wired. Mm -hmm. And yeah. certain dynamics in life, there's nothing you can do to really get around those dynamics. It's how people feel. Like, y'all are poly. So y'all automatically know off rip. If somebody's going to mess with any of y'all, the people around y'all can't be jealous. Like his girls, his girls got to be, they got to be like sisters. They can't even be like friends. They got to be like sisters because they need to have a dynamic where they get, they get along. They can't be jealous. They can't be catty. They're going to mess up the, they're going to mess up the structure. They're going to mess up the structure of his household. It's going to be instable that he's going to have to deal with her bickering because of this or because he's treating her this way. He's treating her that way. And then there's going to be instability. So there's always a dynamic there that's at play. And if that dynamic is not balanced, something is going to be off. Even like she said before, she's like a hierarchy. Why? Because everybody knows, even if you're poly, even if you're a man and you got four or five women, what do you need to have? You need to have the one that sits on the top. And she is the one that almost like vets and brings in and almost like trains the other ones. Not all relationships, not all poly relationships have a hierarchy. Not True. all of them do. True, but most do. No, no. not most. No. no, no, not all poly relationships are the same either. <laughs> There's women that have multiple husbands. I'm aware they're not all the same. I'm aware. There's yeah, there there's no hierarchy in my dynamics. So I have three women that I'm very much in love with, and I'm very much in love with them. These two choose to get along. They don't have to. They don't want to. We don't. We don't have to. We don't have to be on the podcast together. We, we, <laughs> we appreciate y'all being on the podcast with with Barry. We love y'all. <laughs> um, yeah. So okay. So any men come to you and disagree with you? No. That is very hard to believe. <laughs> but I'll take no, your word for it. No, I'll take your word for it. Honesty. No, because you have to understand men. If a if a man is going to disagree with me, he's actually going to disagree with me on my post. And he's going to make a whole paragraph and he's going to make a big scene about it. If a man, oh, I beg to differ. I don't. I don't agree with that either. Congratulate. <laughs> he's usually going to come inside of my inbox. Okay. See, there's um, two different types of male species. You have a boy and you have a man. Oh. And I, I'm probably going to fuck this up, but. I believe the statement goes that a boy does what he can and a man does what he wants. So I believe that if a if a if a guy were to come onto your thing and he states um, a disagreement to your post, he would definitely go into your inbox and say, "Yo, I don't agree with this." Da 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 da. But a boy would want to be seen and not heard. And he would be the one to throw the 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 da -da -da and be all rowdy with his shit on your post. You're missing the dynamic. You see, there's a dynamic at play here. Not only when I make a post, there's a lot of women involved. So when a man comes on my post, he actually is he's almost like grandstanding because there are a lot of women sitting there waiting for one man to come on there to go disagree with this guy so that they can get behind that guy and be like, yeah, and get all underneath. And you'll see all the comments. They'll be like 300, 400, 800. Men know this. Why are they going to waste all that energy they can get on my post coming in my inbox where me and him are just going to have a meager conversation where I say this, 
he says that, then I disagree, and that's it. When they can go and, you know, sometimes they'll even get some followers. They'll hop on one of my posts. My posts will be going viral. It's It, it makes sense. I don't even mind. It makes sense for, the com to, for them to come on my post and disagree than it is for them to come in my inbox. Now, why do they come in my inbox? The same exact reason, the dynamic, women. I have a lot of women who follow me. Men know that. They're not going to come down there and be like, yeah, bro, that was a mad good post. You know what, man? You really hit the head on that. A lot, Only some really secure men are going to do that. The men that don't want to feel like they're beneath me, they're coming in my inbox. They're going to be like, hey, man, you're doing a really good job, man. Keep up that post. Hey, man, that post you wrote, yo, man, I can't push it on my page like that, man, without getting a lot of flack. So I really appreciate it, man. Keep doing your thing. That's what happens on my page. Well, you, you did have a couple of guys who came on there and said and agreed with you. You will. I, I will. Because but I, I also I also don't think too many men are going to go into another man's DM either. So to me, that doesn't really look right. And then most men will, I, I would think, are not going to go into another man's DM, especially if y'all don't know each other personally, to have that conversation. Mm -hmm. um, but Okay, so no no man disagree with you, and I don't see any men on here, and maybe I'm not seeing all the comments, but I don't see any man on here disagreeing with you. I see all of the men that did comment. C1. It looks like agreeing with you. Go ahead, C1. Derek. C1 disagree. It's one? Okay, like I said, I don't think I see all of them. I think I'm only seeing like the positive, I mean, the, the, the newest comments. I was talking about me. Oh, <laughs> Okay. Well, yes, we know that you are willing to speak up and speak out. Um, okay. So any women, any women come in your inbox and agree with you? I'm going to, I'm going to start with the agree with the women. Any women come in your inbox agreeing no. with your post? No, people, no, they, no, no. Every, if you look on that post and look at the comments, trust me, anybody that has something to say, they said it on that post, especially women. They didn't, they don't hold back. They just, you know what I'm saying? They well, you me. did. You did admit earlier that a couple of people did. So I was just asking. So I'm assuming that maybe some of the couple of ones you got were women who were not happy with your post, maybe? You mean the comments on the post? No, I'm asking if you had, if any woman was just super upset with you about your post. No, no. Women were not, they, they weren't oh. upset. No. Okay, okay. Um, so... The other thing I want to go back to is the lie. Why do men feel that they have to lie to get what they want? Why can't a man just be honest and uh -huh. give a woman the chance and the opportunity to decide where she wants to go from there? Because me personally, and I think most grown mature women would appreciate a man who comes to them and say, hey, I met such and such and I think she's sexy. And, you know, I want to get that or I want to fuck, fuck, whatever y'all's language are that you, you know, the way y'all speak, because I'm not a man, I can't speak for y'all. But why do men feel that they have to lie to mm -hmm. get what they want? Why? Um, let me uh, first, let me start off by saying that <clears throat> the reason why we lie is because we're met with a dynamic that we have to get around. And if we're met with a dynamic that we have to get around or we see something else and we want and we have to manipulate it, then we manipulate it. Another thing you need to understand here, women aren't gonna have a problem with my post. They're not gonna have a problem with my post because if you listen to my post, my post isn't me talking up men or talking about how great men are. My talk is actually me breaking down the psychology of how men feel slightly insecure when they can't sexually attach themselves to women. So basically what I did was I gave women free game. They can't not like the post. The only thing you can say as a woman if you read that post is, oh, okay, okay. That you, have makes men, you know, you have women saying that it's disgusting. Why women say that's why I'm single because of men like you. They Women were very clear and not happy but, with your post. But, but, <laughs> A lot of what listen, a lot of a lot of certain women were unclear, but as you already know, there were other women that were just like, I really appreciate 
And this, this is another thing. Why is she saying, I really hate men like you? What do you mean men like me? I made the post. I explained the dynamic to you. That post has nothing to do with me. This is another. Why do you demonize the person who wrote it? I have nothing to do with that post. Well, you having the the the, I'm going to say the audacity or the or the, the, the for you to have the the strength. I guess that's not the word I'm, I want to use, but the for you to be be able to make a post like that does have some kind of reflection on you. Whether it's it not about you or not, it still does have some reflection. No, no, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Well, but you, you sound like you truly believe what you're saying, where where it's not fact. There's no studies that prove what you're saying. So you have to believe the things that you're saying to post them. I don't think you're going to just post a bunch of lies. I said what it is I said. You guys literally sat here and was just like, Dad, we didn't find one man to actually disagree with this guy. And you're sitting here like, you know, how did you prove this point? And how did you? I don't need to. I understand simple psychology. I explained it to everyone. Nobody on there besides women who were angry that certain things had occurred to them and that a man had the audacity to say what it is I said are going to get upset about it. You can't get upset about it. It's simply information. I didn't think all I did was explain. But, but information is factual, not opinionated information. Right, right. You're saying as a, you said a psychological, you're using a lot of words as if what your posts are, what your posts are, are factual. Just because you post them doesn't make them factual. And just because you say that they're psych psycho the psychology or the dynamics doesn't make them factual. And people did come on your post and say, no, I don't agree with this. That You do have people that uh, disagree with you on your post, but you also have 250 hearts and likes. And the, most of those people didn't even comment. So I'm sure that those people that were liking it Harding it, laughing at it, whatever. They had opinions. They just chose not to give their opinion. So what I'm trying to say or what I'm saying to you is that no, I can make a post about a movie and I can say, oh, this movie was great and the characters was out of la. That doesn't mean that that's the truth and that's the factual and that's not the, the five star rating that, you know, somebody else might give. But it does have some some kind of reflection on me as a person if I'm going to make the post. So the same thing is for you. People might say, if he is posting this, this ha might have some kind of, not necessarily truthful, some kind of reflection on him as a person, even if it's not your exact behavior. But you're even saying now that you're you're giving these dynamics and that this is um, some psychology on it. You're using words that make it seem as if you feel as if this these are facts when they're not facts. These are just your your experiences and the things that you've been through or the things that you've witnessed. It doesn't make them fact at all. I, I want to say too, I, like, I don't want you to think I'm judging you, man, because I like, I've never seen any of your other posts. I'm, I'm focusing on this one and what I've heard from you tonight. I would say what I've heard from you tonight, it sounds a lot like a He-Man Woman Haters Club and it sounds like you've been hurt. And, um, you know, I, I have too, so I get it. But it, sound, it, it really sounds like you're angry and you're trying to defend something. And I don't, I think, um, I don't know, man. I don't know who hurt, who hurt you. I hope you heal. Yeah, I, I feel I feel as if who the, whatever this post is about, it comes from a place of a man, not necessarily you, but man, men, who had expectations of a woman and those expectations didn't pan out. And now they are feeling as if, well, why didn't this woman have any feelings for me? Or why didn't she give me more? Or why didn't I get what I thought I was going to get out of this? You know, I fucked her real good, but she ain't calling me back. She done put me in the friend zone or whatever. And I feel, and again, these are all feelings mm -hmm. that, um, it comes from a place of just someone who maybe their expectations of the woman didn't pan out. And so you have these feelings of um, now I can't control you or it's leaving me confused or I have to lie to you and stuff like that. Um, it doesn't seem like it comes from a place of a man who 
has been in love, in love, mm. or or um, has had the an experience with women who really are are willing to live their own lives the way they want to live their lives. Because I was in a space. I know personally, I was in a space where I could just go out and I could sleep with someone and I could send him off on his way and I didn't give two fucks about it. Did that make me a bad person? No, it just meant that I wasn't ready to be in a relationship, but I had needs that I need to be met. That didn't make me a bad person. Um, and I think it's okay. It's okay for men and women to just sleep with someone and not get caught up, maybe do it again and not get caught up and not have emotions attached or heartstrings pulled. Um, don't no expectations of being lied to, not needing to be controlled or anything like that. Um, so I don't know. Uh, when I when I read it, I'm seeing it differently now. Um, you know, talking to you and just um, hearing you and just getting other perspectives, reading the comments. Um, but that's why I was asking: Did anyone get really upset with you? Did any men express how they felt? you know, about your posts, because it's a lot of hearts and likes, but not not as many comments, maybe 30% of comments based on the likes. Um, I did agree with you when you said that men are attracted to your free spirit, but in the same breath, we want that free spirit in a cage so only we can enjoy it. I do agree with that. Now that I'm going to agree with, because I, I think we all... You, you, uh, Barry didn't get with with um, his partners and not see something about them that they liked. We all love and are attracted to people for a reason. So we want that to ourselves. I wouldn't necessarily say putting that free spirit in a cage. I wouldn't necessarily say that or use that term. But I would say that when we are attracted to people, we want that all for ourselves. And when we don't get that, then we feel hurt or wounded or, 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 rejected. or rejected or broken mm -hmm. or out of control or feel like we, we don't have everything in control that we thought that we did. Um, and that's okay. People go through those emotions every day of loss and, and, you know, not lost connections and, and all of that. Good Disappointment. Stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for you, um, I have, I have read your post since then. You have some really, really great posts. Um, con controversial, argumentative, straight to the facts, on point. And then you have some where I'm just like, mm, like this one. I was like, mm, let's talk about this. Let's talk about this. <laughs> so know that you are respected. And this is not us, me, or anyone on here saying, we don't agree with you. We don't like what you're saying, because that's not it. We like to have different opinions and different outlooks on relationships and sex. That's what we're all about. That's what our, our podcast is all about. Um, and so you brought that perspective. And I think it's really good for, for women to hear different perspectives. But I also think it's good for men to hear different perspectives as well. You know, women, we can, we can have sex without emotions. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. That doesn't make you less of a man. It doesn't mean that you didn't do do it good. It doesn't mean that you aren't deserving of our affections. We just might not be in that place. Like Tiffany said, we might not want a relationship. We might just want to fuck and that's it. We might just want to be made love to have sex. And but I think conversations and, and I think um the problem in today with society is conversations are not being had before hopping into the bed. Like expectations of what to what, what what's going to happen after if we end up you know mm -hmm. being sexually involved or active with one another what is your like like nobody wants to get to know anybody anymore everybody goes straight from hey what's up beautiful or hey what's up handsome in an inbox to a hotel room within <laughs> five minutes so nobody's getting to know anybody today like on a deeper level Everything is very instant. And if it doesn't, if people aren't aren't getting what they want, then it's like, oh, I'm just gonna ghost you or I'm gonna dog you out or you're you're not worth my time. Oh, like like women come around with with uh um how did I say it? Um women come around with with um 
eyes on the man's pockets and men come around with eyes on the woman's female pockets. <laughs> so it, it's, it's, it's a transactional, it's, it's transactional relationships now. And I, I feel like you may have been hurt in the past and in the, in the eyes of her, I'm seeing that it comes from a, a, a state of rejection. And I know that that is very, very hard on a man's ego. And it's like, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm kind of going all over the place because it's, yeah. it's, this is like a very deep rooted hurt that, and not just, it might not just be, it's, it's a lot of men out here that are going through that. They've oh. been cheated on in the past. They've been um, disregarded. They've been easily replaced by a bum most of the time. <laughs> um, you know what I'm saying? So I get where you're coming from. It's just no. how you're, you, you posted it, how it was worded that it as a woman, it comes off disrespectful. It doesn't matter if it comes off disrespectful. That's the dynamic. I don't you keep saying that. that's the dynamic. That's your dynamic. That's no, not everyone's no, dynamic. No, it's <laughs> dynamic. Like before, you asked me, watch this. You asked me, why do women lie to, why do men lie to women? I'm going to tell you as simple as this. To fuck you. <laughs> we lie to you to fuck you. That's true. That's and true. Fuck you no, with I completely agree with possible. you. We agree, we agree with you, but we're and saying that you're as saying. As possible. Now, yeah. I told you the truth. Everybody fucking knows that. Women, since they were fucking nice, he bought After he fucked me, he didn't call me again. After he fucked me, I never got a text back. He lied to you the whole entire time. To get some pussy, he knew what the chances are, and he knew exactly how to play you to get your pussy. Now, does that make Damien a bad person? Does that mean he's hurt? Does that mean he's been rejected and blah, blah, blah? blah, blah, blah? No. I in the job. I just explained. Never. But that's your, <laughs> this is your impression of dynamics. This is not everyone's, this is not everyone's truth. This is your truth. <laughs> All right, everything I just said, nobody, nobody I, ever, no one said that. No happened. one said that, Damien. No one said that. I said that this what you're saying is not fact. What you're saying is from experience, and it might be other people's experience, it might be other people's truth, but that doesn't mean that what you're saying is fact. That's all I said. I, so you know, for you, it might be it might be your truth, it might be other men's truth, but that doesn't mean that it's every man's truth it doesn't mean that it's every man's life and every man's experience is what i'm saying no nah, but it usually comes about 90 plus percent of what it is i'm stating hmm okay you're saying hmm, but <laughs> okay those are true that it's it, okay it's no, true for you why, okay why do you lie to you why do you think men lie to women go ahead you tell me I'm not talking about the lie. I didn't. I'm not disagreeing with that. I'm saying that everything that you've said tonight is is how you feel, your experiences, your what you have seen, what you have dealt with, and there maybe other men in your life, in your circle. But that doesn't mean every man agrees with you. No, every man is not going to agree with me. But for the most part, they're going to agree with me. I don't care about the little ten percent that's over there. Like I don't because I think. That Blah, blah. That ten percent matters. That ten percent matters when you try to say all men. All men don't agree with you, so that ten percent does matter. Okay, so what you do is you want to grab the ten percent and go. Everything you just said is absolutely completely wrong. It's not. It's not. Okay, I'm. I love your confidence. That's fine, and we'll, 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 we'll leave it there. Men are weak. Would you agree? I'm saying. Say that again. Would you agree that most men are weak? No. You wouldn't agree? No. Okay. No. I don't agree that most men are weak. I'm not <laughs> sure where that was going, but no. <laughs> I don't. I don't think most men are weak. I don't I don't think most men are are put or can be under one category or one dynamic or one place. I don't believe anybody, man or woman, can be put under one column. I, I just don't believe that. I, I've been 
in my profession for a long time. And I don't believe that based on my experience in my career. I don't believe that. Um, but what I will say is that you made some pretty valid points um, about, you know, just the um, emotions of, you know, relationships. And even if they're situationships, even if they're just sexual um, relationships that um, men and women can actively engage and have sex with someone else and just walk away and there not be emotions. But both, I think both men and women um, feel some kind of way if they really like that person. I do agree that people lie to get what they want. I also will agree that a man will lie to a woman to have sex with her. I agree with all of that. I also think that, um, and I'll let Barry elaborate on this and Tiffany, be, be, you know, in our closing and your closing as well, is that um, some of the points that you made are definitely something that women need to understand how a man feels. Um, men ask all the time, well, what, what do women want? I think we were looking at a video over the weekend, Tiffany, and the guy mm -hmm. at the end was like, well, what do women want? <laughs> you know? And so mm -hmm. I think it's important that we, that, you know, it's understood that we as women, we want to know what the hell y'all want too and what y'all are thinking. Because <laughs> that is something that men, women and men talk about, debate about, disagree about, agree about um, all the time is the, the difference in the way men and women think and the difference in the way men and women feel and that trying to understand one another starts with communication. Like Tiffany said, like you should be having these conversations before you even fuck, like before you even have sex, like what is this going to be? I've done it. Like, um, I know that this ain't going nowhere, but let's just enjoy us. Have a good time. Like, let's have people need to have those conversations up front to avoid the hurt, the needing to control, the needing to lie, the needing to cheat, all that kind of stuff. You need to have those conversations up front when you meet somebody. If you want to just have sex with them, say that you just want to have sex with them. I know a woman like me, I don't know how, what other women, but. A woman like me, I prefer for you to tell me that you just want to have sex with me. And hope, And I know a lot of women in my circle, and I think that has a lot to do with people's circles as well and their experiences. A lot of women in my circle would say the same thing. Tell me that you just want to sleep with me and let me decide if that's what I want. And so a lot of these conversations and a lot of these these reasons for these posts would be a lit, uh, um, uh, wouldn't even have to take place if people would just com communicate and have mature conversations before they even go down certain paths. And that's my two cent. <laughs> that's my two cent. Barry. I, I think there's something important to uh, be said about what you said. Um, I live in my truth. And if when I've been in a position where I, I had one partner and I was potentially looking for another one, you know, I was very open about the fact that I'm open to connection, possibly more, you know, see where it goes. Um, I've also been in situations to where um, my love life is, is saturated. That doesn't mean I'm not open for, you know, meeting somebody. Maybe we can have a little fun. So, and I'm very upfront about that. And I have found that... Um, I think that's one of the mistakes that a lot of men are making is that I think it's refreshing to women when you're just straight up and honest and you tell them like, this is where I'm at right now. Mm -hmm. This it might not be where I'm at six months from now, but today, right now, as we're talking, this is exactly where I'm at. I'm, you know, I'm looking for something more or I'm, I'm just looking for something casual or, or I'm just looking for a friend or whatever it is, you know? And I think, I think it's important to, um, there's something about learning to be honest with yourself and everybody else, and how much weight that takes off of you and how you can hold your head up and how you can own your own space. And I think. Yeah. Good thought. Good thought. Um, Damien or Tiffany, last thoughts, either one. Tiffany. 
Um, I'm just going to say that when it comes to any kind of interaction with anybody, communication, transparency, or honesty, I think have to be key components to a successful connection. Um, whether it be just in the bedroom or dating or um, committed relationship. That, uh, to me, that's my opinion on it. But I feel like that's a healthy route. Um, but like I said before, the day and time that we live in, this dating pool is... <laughs> Right. It, 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 there's no H2O, there's no pH balance, there's no <laughs> it's shit <laughs> we're swimming in a pool of fucking shit <laughs> I personally just choose not to go swimming I'm, I'm fine taking a shower or a bath by myself I, I don't I, I, I've retired my, my dating days and not just because like I'm polyamorous and I have a partner, but you know, it's just, it, it's not for me. I'm, I'm, I don't want to be the, the person that hurts someone or the person to be hurt. Yeah. Yeah. The 10 months that I was, I was separated from my husband. I was just like, this is crazy. The, 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 the dating scene, even though I wasn't dating to be with someone, but I was going out with people and spending time, you know, getting to know people. It was, I agree. Like dating is not, is hard nowadays. People just want to just take off running and don't want to invest no time into you. And when they do want to invest time into you, then you just got, you got to sift through a whole bunch of shit. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> and there's a lot of hurt people hurting other people out here. Very true. Very and I'm true. in this, I'm in this, I'm in the, 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 I'm on the healing journey right now for me to deal with someone who is still hurt would only put me back and not help me progress forward on my journey. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Respect it. Respect it. Very respect it. Damien, um, close us out. At the end of the day, as far as I'm concerned, there's nothing wrong with the people. You just certain people that are going to approach you in a healthy manner because they're stable and they're looking for a healthy dynamic relationship. And that's all that they're looking for. Like there's a guy out there that'll go entertain a girl. And once he finds out he's too wild, too crazy, doesn't look like she's going to be a stable mom or something like that, he's not going to take her out for drinks, try and bang her or anything. That woman is not what he's looking for. He's not going to even entertain that. Then there's another guy who's just, he's going to keep entertaining that and banging those till the end of time. And he's mm -hmm. just going to wing it until just somebody comes along. If you're a woman who runs into that guy, you got to be like, hey, are you just out here doing your thing? Or you actually want to actually invest in me? See, me, I actually literally will sit, stop, and see if said woman wants to invest in me or she just wants to experience me. Some people just want to experience you. They're just passing through. Oh, I think that would be nice. This would be fun. And then that would be fun. And then, yeah, I didn't really think anything past that. And then other people want to build with you. You have to find the people that want to build and grow with you because those people, they actually have enough energy to actually handle you. Those are the people that if you have a disagreement or something, happen you talk it over you work it out and you move forward the other people that are just passing through the first time you check them the first time there's one little ounce of disrespect they just yeah you know what yeah i'm just gonna go about my business and yada 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 why because they were never there to try and work or build with you they were there for just a nice beautiful light fluffy experience once they fluffy at all and they might have had to put some energy in or something like that or actually attach their emotions or something boom they're out the door. So just find people that give a damn about you, that actually want to build with you. Don't get the flimsy people. If you try and get the flimsy people, you're going to get the same result every time. And then after a while, you're going to start thinking, you know what? Everybody's crap and this, this, that, and the third, and yada, yada, yada. When that's not the situation, it's just you keep giving your energy to the wrong people. Yes. Very well said. 
Very well said. Very well said. So I'm just going to say here, girls can't never say I want it or need it. Yes, we can. <laughs> yes, you can, girl. You can say that you don't want it and that you don't need it. And it's okay for you to just have a lover. And it's okay for you to just have sex. And it's okay for you to not to get your emotions involved. But talk about it first. Put it out there first. And mm -hmm. just don't bullshit around because there are men who will feel some kind of way. You could possibly hurt by not being honest and not having these kind of conversations up front. And the same with men. Let, let give women a chance. Be honest. Just tell them what you want and let the woman let the woman make the decision whether she wants to deal with your ass or not. <laughs> so yes, ladies, you can. You can say that you want it. You can say you need it, but men can too. So thank you everyone for joining us and we appreciate you all. Thank you, Mr. Damien. I know we will be inviting you back because uh, we've got a couple of different things that came out today that we, we need to talk about again in the future. So hopefully you will come back on and you won't think that we was harassing you because we weren't. We were just having some, some constructive uh, conversation. Um, and um, thank you again for your time, Mr. Michaels. We appreciate you. Um, tell everyone where they can find you on social media, Mr. Michaels. Uh, Damian Michaels Extreme. That's yes. I'm, that's what I'm causing all my havoc. <laughs> yes, that's where he's causing all his havoc. Definitely exactly what he says. So Damian Mike, Michaels Extreme with an X. So X T R E M E. Okay. Damian Michaels Extreme. Make sure that you follow him. Make sure that you join in the conversations. They are some great conversations, including this one that we talked about tonight. Have a great night. Please. We're gonna um we're gonna close out uh with um MK song. Um, need your love. Please stay on just to give your thumbs up or something for the song and then we'll disconnect. Thank you. You're on mute. Sorry, that damn mute button. Um, that was MK Bramlett. Make sure that you go and follow her on IG. She has a beautiful, soulful voice. So make sure you go follow her on IG to listen to that song in full, uh, as well as her other songs, which is at mk.bramlett. Good night, everyone, and thank you for joining us on The Private Room. And we will see you on December 4th. We are taking off next Monday for the Thanksgiving holiday. Have a great night. Peace.